Hey guys, welcome back. I'm going to be continuing working on this uh, 64 Impala. I'm going to be cutting out this next rust hole here. So let's get this cut out and we'll see what it looks like underneath. Um, we have rain coming for like the next four days. And this car is sitting outside because I don't have any room in the shop right now. So basically, I'm going to get this fixed. We're going to get this side all body worked. And then we'll see how the weather is doing later on because um, I want to get this in primer. So whatever I have body work today, I got to get in primer and then I'm going to cover it back up with the tarp and then we'll let it rain for a couple days. We'll work on uh, the 59 Impala, you know, whatever we got to do for the next couple days. Um, so I want to get this fixed. This is important to get fixed today. In here, I want to get fixed today. And then let's just try to get this side buttoned up and then I'll just have to do the other side at the beginning of next week. So let me get the cutter I'm going to cut this open, then I'll come back and show you what it looks like underneath. All right, let's look at this disaster. We've got to save this piece so that we can make a new one. Somebody put tar or something in there. So that's always good. I don't think that's a factory thing, but then again, it might be. I don't know. So we have a hole all the way through, so we're going to have to patch that inner. Definitely smells like tar, but I think it's rubber. Some sort of a foam. I don't know if these cars had anything like that back then. Probably not, but it could have. So that'll catch on fire when I get it weld. That'll be nice. Alright, so I need to cut out this back section, and then I got a little rust hole right here I need to cut out. When I make this panel, and I put it back in, I gotta drill that hole right there for the uh, clip for the uh, molding. So let's cut out this back section here. some rust converter in there um now keep in mind if this is rusty like this it's more than likely like that over there as well but nothing we could do about it unless the whole quarter panel gets replaced I don't see any of that foam stuff here. I wonder if somebody stuffed some in there. I don't know. Okay, I'm going to get these areas treated, let them dry for a little bit, and we'll come back and we can start making some patch panels. shove it up there and get it out of the way. Alright, let me get this coated. I'll come back in a little while. Alright, I'm going to trace out this uh, big piece first here. I'm going to make it a little bit longer because that bend is going to take up some of the material. 
and we can always cut it again. to the top. Oop, I got it upside down. Did it wrong. Well, actually, that should work. This is the top. Okay. Let's go make a bend in this. All right, let's get this bent. We'll use the old one as our template for our angle. This is our top. So we need to bend it. I need to put it upside down. Don't want to go too crazy with it. Check it. Pretty good there. Maybe a hair more. Now these videos I'm making on these patch repair panels are pretty much, um, they're not really edited much to where basically what I'm showing you is about how long it takes to make one of these patches. Um, it doesn't take that long at all really. Once you get the hang of it and you learn it real quickly, you can do them pretty quickly. Um, so just so you guys know that it's not like taking way longer than what the video shows. Um, now, if you look at this bender here, this bender puts a nice little radius here. It's a little bit more of a radius than what was on the car. This is a little bit of a uh, more abrupt edge than this one, not far off. But this is 16 gauge. This is thicker than what the quarter panel is made out of. So I can physically take my grinder on both edges of this and knock that to a tighter edge. And it'll still be plenty thick enough. So let's go back out there and we will um, see how this is fitting. Pretty good. A little long in the bottom. And we have a slope that goes like this. 
in the quarter panel. So I need to see if I can bend that into this piece here. So I know what I need to do. I need to see if I can get it to do it. So this has got to be have a little slope like that. So I'm going to try to do is start towards the edge, the very edge. Then I'm going to move it in. Move it in one more time. If you look, that gave it a little bit of a curve there. So let's go try that again now. I mean, this doesn't have to be perfect because once you grind it and then do your body work, you can finish getting that slope to where you want it. But you want to get it close. That actually looks pretty darn good. I'm happy with that. I think I need to tighten this bend up a little bit more. So I'm going to go bend that a little bit more just to bring a little bit of a tighter bend. Okay, let me test fit this. We still got to make the inner piece. I just wanted to get this outer one made. So that's looking pretty good. I got to cut this down so it can slide in some. So we'll do that in a minute. Okay, I went ahead and made this inner piece. Um, you see this funky bend right here at the end? comes out it's because there's a bend right here so these two fit in there nicely so we're going to get this tacked in I don't know if I can tack with that black paint on there that rust converter but I'm going to try it Seems like it's okay. So we're gonna get this welded in in here. I gotta get my mask out real quick. Okay, now I did not put uh, weld through primer on the backside because I can get to the backside. So there's no point in putting it, wasting it when I can just paint the backside afterwards.
I'm going to lightly grind that down and then put some uh, uh, weld through primer on it. Okay, I just lightly ground it and put weld through primer on it. I also put weld through primer on the back side of this. Now, these type of jobs here are something the average person can do at their house. And that's what this whole 64 Impala build is all about, is showing you guys easy, simple ways to fix stuff without getting into tens of thousands of dollars and buying new metal, full panels, and everything like that. Is this going to last as long as replacing a full panel? Probably not, but you never know. I mean, this quarter panel right here is all solid still. Is there rust behind it? I'm sure. But this panel's from 1964, and it's still not rusted through. So you got a good chance that you might get, you know, a long, long time out of it. And if you take care of the car, you know, it doesn't get soaking wet or salt or anything on it that's corrosive. I mean, you might be fine. You know, you might never have to worry about it. But this is just some cheap ways to fix stuff for just going out and buying some sheets of sheet metal that cost you, you know, you can get a two foot by two foot piece for about 30 bucks, 16 gauge. And you can get most of the patches done out of your car with that. Um, I purposely had, I had a Lincoln electric welder, or I'm sorry, a Century welder for 20 some years and it finally broke. And I purposely went to Harbor Freight and bought this welder right here. $500 I think it was. I already had the welding tank from my previous welder. Just to prove a point that you don't need to buy the most expensive tools to do what you need to do. And to be honest with you, I've been pretty damn happy with this welder. I think it works pretty good. Um, I really can't, I have nothing bad to say about it. But then again, I'm only welding sheet metal. My other welder was a 220 and you could weld up the quarter inch plate. 3 8 with multiple passes. But, um, you know, this is definitely not as good a quality welder, but I don't have any problems with it. I think it welds just fine. So now we're going to get this tacked in. I have to cut that bottom lip still. So we, I only want to put a couple tacks at the top here. Other than this welder or the um, regulator, on the uh, gas seems to keep running for a while. That's the only downfall on this welder. So it's, it's burning through a little bit more gas. Um, I don't know if that's just how this welder is or is the regulator screwed up? I'm not sure. But that seems to be the only problem I've had. And you will notice that when you use a weld through primer, your welds won't be as clean as normal. They'll get a little bit, they won't look as good but they grind down just fine. But I think the weld through primer messes with them a little bit. So now what I need to do here is cut this up a little bit so that it'll slide in, because right here is, is pushed out. We're past this quarter panel. But once we cut this, we should be able to flush it right in there. <laughs>
more I think about that welder, I think I only paid three hundred and eighty dollars for it on sale. I'm going to go ahead and finish welding that off camera. Okay, that one is done. I ground it down and everything. Feels good. Very, very slight warpage. Not bad at all. Um, I'm going to make this one off camera. That's just a little square. No big deal. We also have to drill a hole in this still. So let me get that one made, and then we'll come back and drill this hole. Okay, other patch is made. That literally took five minutes to make that. So now we're going to drill this hole. this patch right where the old one was. Mark the center of the hole. Now the whole size is 5 16 There we go. So now we have those patches all fixed. Now we're on to that inner wheel well, and that's the last patch I'm going to make today on this car, and then um, probably going to do some sandblasting. Cut a piece of metal out that's going to turn into that, hopefully. I'm going to go bend that real quick at a 90 degree, and I'll be back. Okay, I got that bent at a 90. It's going to be real hard to see inside this wheel well. But I need to get this to go back in here. Cut this on an angle right here. I'm gonna eyeball it. I need to go. 
go bend this at a 90 um, this way. I'm going to have to probably do it on the vise. I'm not going to raise this up too high. do some trimming and fitting and I'm going to tack that in there and then I'll try to get the camera in there for you guys to see it. All right I have it tacked in there you can see it. Um, now I'm going to put a coat of uh, long strand fiberglass. I'm going to finish welding that and I'm going to put a coat of short strand fiberglass on these welded areas and then I'll come back. I got to grind down that primer so that I have something good to bond to. Okay I got some short strand fiberglass on all the welds. The reason, once again, the reason why I use this is to any pinholes in the welds, it fills them in, hopefully keeps the moisture from coming through to the bodywork. So we're going to let that dry for a little bit. While that's drying, I'm going to sandblast some parts. I'll video it for a couple minutes here, I'm just outside right now, and I'm going to do these hood hinges and some other parts. So I'll let it run for a couple minutes while I blast and show you how it comes off. Pause it for a minute while I get my hood on.
Okay, you can see how nice this looks now. About 10 minutes of time between this and this hinge and part of another panel. And I've got it pretty clean. There's some pretty gunked up stuff between these springs. I'm gonna hit that with a wire wheel. But uh, bags of, uh, this is bags of coal slag. Um, it's about $10, $12 a bag at Tractor Supply. And uh, you'll get probably these parts out of a bag. Um, I am eventually gonna get a sandblasting cabinet. But the one I want is like thirty-five to four thousand dollars because I want one that's like six foot long, so that I can fit drive shafts, fenders, all that stuff in there, doors, stuff like that. So I'm gonna get. Um, I think I'm gonna do that. I'll do that uh, front cowl on camera, and then I'll go back and finish this other stuff up. Okay, I'm gonna get ready to do this part. I always leave other parts that I'm sandblasting underneath the parts that I'm sandblasting. So that whatever miss sand it kind of hits those other ones let me get my hood on here real quick Okay, I just got done sandblasting, it took me about an hour or so. I was able to get all these parts and almost both wheel wells. I need one more bag of sand. So I got all these parts on four bags of sand, which was about 50 bucks. So $50 in about an hour and a half of my time. Once these things are painted, like this front cowl, once that's painted body color, it'll look perfect. Same thing with those hood hinges and everything. Once I paint all that stuff satin black, it's gonna look brand new. Um, I'm only uh sandblasting at about 100 psi by staying around 100 psi i'm not warping this metal so everything looks nice and straight i don't have to worry about warping it um i'm going to buzz down this fiberglass real quick and then i'm going to put a coat of uh bondo on there and then we'll uh i'll come back and we'll sand that down okay the first coat is drying i might only get two coats of this on tonight weather's getting crappy it's going to rain soon what i might end up having to do is sand down this coat put on one more coat sand it down and might just have to hit these 
areas with some epoxy primer tonight, cover the car up and let it set until the rain's done in a few days. And then we'll come back in, sand it down, you know, sand the rest of the fender down and stuff like that and do the uh, rest of the body work. So we might just have to seal it up for a few days with some epoxy primer. But I'll be back shortly to sand this. <sighs> I'm going to sand down this second coat and I'm just going to stop after that tonight. I'm going to seal up the bare metal and the bondo areas, wait a couple days for the rain to stop. While I'm waiting for the rain to stop, I'm just going to work on the 59 because uh, I don't have a lot of room in the front shop to sand down the fenders and doors and trunk lid of hood for this car. So we'll just take a break on this for a couple days. We'll go work on the 59. There's plenty to put together on that. I have all the windows to put on or in power windows and all that stuff. I have continental kit I can put on. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to do on that car. So we'll just concentrate on that for the weekend. In the beginning of next week in the afternoon, we'll get back onto this. <laughs> Got a couple of welds sticking out here. We'll have to grind those down a little bit. This is just the fiberglass showing through. But it's not looking too bad. We got a little bit of a dip right there. 
I don't want to get up into here too much with that sander. And I think I'm just going to leave this unsanded because I'm not going to hit it with this. And I don't really feel like getting out another sander right now. So we'll just epoxy over this because we're going to end up sanding that epoxy right back off the car. So I'm just going to go ahead and stop with this, get this epoxied, and uh, call it a night on this car. Because I want that epoxy to dry for a while before I cover this up with the tarp. So that's going to go ahead and end this video for the 64. There won't be any more videos for a few days unless the weather changes on the 64. We're going to concentrate on the 59. Should be a video coming out tonight of it starting for the first time. I got to call my buddy and see if he's coming down to help me. But other than that, um, hope you guys are liking what you're seeing. Please like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. If you don't mind, that would be greatly appreciated. And any questions or comments, feel free to ask. Other than that, I will see you guys later.